It's a, very nice to see you. It's a it's a big honor for me to do this. I'm a little nervous. Uh, I'm I'm a, uh, uh, very good, and I'm a little nervous about the Zoom. So please, I, I some of you may or may not know. I occasionally make videos, and what Tay said is is for me very important. We only have one hour. So that's not much to cover everything from how the 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 inside and outside basis works, how the how the uh, uh, PTC versus ITC is different risk allocation, how to finance back leverage, how to use a pay go, uh, whatever, what what a DRO really means. Okay, all of these issues. Uh, uh, in just one hour and you can think oh my gosh I'll just have to talk really fast and, and cover them all uh, but I still I think it's totally fine if you interrupt me send Tay a message and we'll stop we'll, we'll, we'll stop and try to clarify now in in thinking about this I've just got to tell you I, I'm, I'm not going to uh, 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 represent myself as somebody who I'm not. So I'll tell you what I don't do. I don't sit and work on private equity. I, I mean, on, on tax equity transactions. I couldn't even get the word out right every day. I don't sit there and work on these monster big models with tax equity every minute. I don't do that. I've worked on in one way or another on, on this subject for now probably 15 years. And I'm I'm going to try to come at this to you from a very different background, and uh, I will in, in in just a minute I'll I'll switch to the tool I will use to try to explain uh, explain some of this. But I did what maybe a lot of you have done. And when you first see tax equity, whether it's on a wind project with production tax credit or whether it's a solar project with investment tax credit or now a hydrogen project, which depending on what kind of hydrogen, if it's blue or, or green, could be using 45Q or PTC or ITC, it can be, and, and then you see DRO, you see inside outside basis, you see all these things. It can be incredibly intimidating for you. Uh, for me, it was totally intimidating. And so I did what a lot of modelers might do and started looking at some existing models. Now I, I, I will tell you, I'll, I, I have a collection. It's some of the collection isn't fantastic, but I have a collection that I'll, I'll, I'll show you where you can find for some existing models and trying to go to those models and reverse engineer and figure out what they're doing. That was a horrible thing to do. Absolutely horrible. Instead, to try to understand, number one, why the in the US, the Internal Revenue Service might have some of the rules it does and mandate you to compute a balance sheet in, 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 in a certain way versus another way. Why? What's the, what, what's the reason? And then understanding the strategic aspects of this, which could be anywhere from how you finance the project to how you split the income in a partnership, to whether you use this thing called an inverted or sandwich lease, to uh, oh, we could we could go on, we could go on. Understanding the strategy versus the tax rules, why the tax rules exist, and then understanding how to present some of the risks and the returns from different strategies that for me i wish i would have started it correctly by trying to understand 
the rules and then the strategies and then the presentation. And I can tell you, I am sorry, I'm gonna make some, you can see how old I am and I've been modeling for way too long. And Tay gave you that book, which is totally boring. It's a little bit out of date. I'm writing another one right now. But the, 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 uh, I, uh, um, I want to try to give you in this little session a little bit of background and change, hopefully, change the way you might think about some of these issues, most importantly, how you might present some of the models and, uh, 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 and, and, uh, let me get started. Let me get started. So what I'm going to do mainly is just share the screen. And when I share the screen here, I hope I don't mess anything up. I'm going to go, uh, uh, I have a website. Okay. And it's, it's just my name. Now I hope I can see this. All right. So I have this thing. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's my name, edbodmer.com. Okay. Whatever. Sorry about, it. I should have came up with a better name for this. But then I have a little section on project finance and some other stuff. And you go down to tax equity. And you can do this, but you can find it later. And then whoops, oh, no, I messed up already. And then if we go to tax equity, and we have some strategic things, we can talk about different ways to allocate uh, uh, income and cash flow between if, 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 if with, with these these uh, flips which we'll get into how to convert your model how to model win projects and whoops um don't worry don't worry tay I'm, I'm i'm screwing up a little bit but but just bear with me and then we then we'll talk about things like uh whoops uh, uh an inverted lease and a sale lease back Okay, and then, oh, I'm really messing up with this thing. And then what this whole inside capital, outside capital, DRO deficit reduction, how intimidating, how horrible. Maybe you're gonna drop off the, the call right now, but here, so I think I've introduced, I've tried to just for this session, Tay, I've, instead of going through PowerPoint slides, I've just thrown my stuff on on this uh, uh, website so you can go and see it and here's what i think when i step back and thought about this now i don't know if you know that kenny who's in charge of the whole he's it, it, the project institute is his, he's just absolutely wonderful i have some discussions with him and i thought okay how am i going to do this for kenny now what here's what i think is the least important and i hope i piss some people off right now. Sorry about that language, but I hope I get some people mad. If somebody thinks the important thing is reciting what's 704B of the IRS code or what's the 731A or what's 754, whatever it is, if you think that that's the important thing, and I've heard people who are so proud of themselves by able to, being, to recite all the rules, it's important. We need to get the rules right. We need to get the rules right in modeling. And the other thing we don't want to do, and I call this the least important, we do not want to have enormously long uh, uh, formulas with if statements. We just, I see so many models with that. It's just unnecessary. The tax code is complicated, but it, there's absolutely no need to, 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 think that you need incredibly long and difficult formulas all of this work all of this will work with a straightforward formula so i think that's the least important thing and i know people fast talking accountants and all that think it's probably the most important thing and are very proud of themselves for it it's a lot more important for me in thinking about this to understand put yourself in a crazy position i'm sure nobody from the the internal revenue service is here and i don't want to get myself in trouble but imagine you are from the internal revenue service and imagine you are making these rules before you start modeling imagine why you would make the rules you would make why you would use the information you would make and suddenly you'll say aha uh -huh. 
this is why we have an inside basis and outside basis and we're gonna we're, we're, we're gonna work through all of these things and then we get into something even more important and we look at strategies strategies include should we make our fixed time flip five years or seven years and if you don't know what i'm talking about even with flips and all this please don't worry please don't worry because because you can look these things up and and and, and, and in those little pages there's some information on that and you can find all of these things but how do we model the strategies how do we model the the you know the key thing is which is if we have a partnership how much return should one partner get uh, compared to another and this gets even crazier because we don't measure the return on the same basis a tax equity investor who let's just be straightforward about this basically wants to get the itc and some tax depreciation and some tax loss how much of a return should they get but when you measure their return that return has got to be after tax their whole reason for doing this is is, is to do it after tax but then when we get to the other side, the other partner, are we going to measure their return after tax? They might have a big tax loss carry forward. They might be part of a big corporation that pays taxes or doesn't pay taxes. They might have a tax carry forward today and not in the future. And some bureaucrats, and this is what I'm going to object to, is this bureaucratic modeling saying, oh, no, you always have to model the partner who I'll call the sponsor or the developer, one of the very first things to do is to find who's the tax investor. And sometimes you just call that the investor, who's the other partner, which is the developer or the sponsor. Should they be modeled on a pre-tax basis or an after-tax basis? And anybody who says, oh, there's one rule is crazy. It depends. And you have to really study the tax position of that partner. And then we can look at financing strategies. And there's an interplay between the financing strategy, whether you do this thing called back leverage, which is essentially financing the dividends, which seems crazy, but the dividends, there's no senior financing. So essentially, whether you put all the financing on one partner who gets most of the cash flow normally, in some, at least in solar transactions, and that's the sponsor or the developer. Do we do our financing on more of a classic project finance basis? Most people use this thing called back leverage, but you don't get intimidated by that. You don't get intimidated by something called a tax equity bridge loan, which sounds all fast, fancy. And the first time you hear about this, just like me, you think, oh no, what's a tax, does that, is that a tax equity bridge loan? Is that a loan to the tax investor? Who, who is it? Is it a loan to the whole uh, 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 company? Who is that loan? The point is you're going to, you, you want to make sure your model can incorporate some of these interesting uh, 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 strategies. I'm just here at the very beginning. I'm going to race through this one. And then you get to the inverted lease. Oh my gosh, you get to the inverted lease. And I'm going to tell you a story about that. I know how to model a sale lease back. That's when you, you, you sell the project to somebody else, that other person, a bank, whoever takes the tax depreciation and makes a lease rate back to you and is supposed to give you the benefit of the tax depreciation. So an inverted lease must be related to that. <laughs> it's got nothing to do with it. And guess what? I started Googling, well, how do you, how, how do you, I had no idea how an inverted lease works. I started Googling. I ended up on my own stupid website. That's how crazy it was. And I had no idea at that time how to do it. I call it a sandwich lease. It's more like a little car lease when you're leasing a, a, a car for five years. And then you, so you've got the, the in a car lease, you've got the a, a dealer, the dealer, and they make a lease with you. And then you pay a lease rate and then get it back. In this case, it's not the dealer, it's the developer of the project. You make a little lease and the developer now gets the, 
gets paid some uh, 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 lease payments. He actually gets paid those from the other investor. It sounds completely bizarre. When you go through it slowly, you'll see why it makes sense. And then you can transfer the investment tax credit. So all of these, all of these different ways to look at the uh, 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 look at the strategic effects of different options is the real big deal. If you want to get good at the modeling, I'm not claiming I'm good at this at all, but that's for me to model those really effectively without a monster model, without a monster, please, without that. And then you get into financing. And of course, you need a P50 and a P90 and all that stuff. And you can imagine these things getting overly complicated really fast and people messing it up because I want to press a button and see what happens if I change the uh, uh, partnership allocations. I want to see if I press a button, what happens to the to the developer return and the sponsor return immediately. I want to see all of those things. So before we start talking about the technical details, I'm already 20 minutes into this. I'm sorry about that, but it's important to really understand what we're doing. And I, then I'll be able to go through this. And for me, the most important is what I've just started to tell you is how do we present the risks? How do we present the risks and the returns and how do we flip and toggle around a different strategy? How do we really look at these things and let our investors who all think they're fast talking, either bankers or accountants or something, and they, they think they're fancy because they say 704B or something or they talk about back leverage. How do we make people really see and visualize the risks and the returns and what's fair to different parties and what makes the most sense in the context of the strategy? That's the way to think not only about this issue, but about modeling in general and stop being, I'm sorry, a modeling bureaucrat and start being somebody who's going to make a good presentation about this and see the strategy. So here, here's what I'm going to work through some of this more quickly now. Um, hey, <laughs> she's really, she doesn't know what she's helped. She said, you know, and we, we had a little course with a few wonderful people and we kind of tried it out and we made sure that we, we, we went through some snags and uh, 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 we, we had a couple of sessions, I think uh, once a week for about seven weeks. So that's how we designed this. And People ask questions. It turned out, number one, and she said, well, make a nice summary. St step back and tell us what you really did. Uh, uh, and I should have started the class maybe a little bit like this. And instead of diving into these enormous models immediately, we said, OK, first, we've got to understand what we're doing. And we set up some simple examples. And so that's what I've tried to do now. Here, here are some some of the general issues i've already covered this you, you know uh, the tax rules how we why we need a balance sheet why in a I, 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 again oh i'm hoping i'm pissing some people off for me people who are proud of themselves for making a three statement model it, it drives me completely crazy okay in, there are a whole lot of things more important than making three financial statements. But, and in project finance, which is all based on cash flows, you don't even care about them normally. In this case, you do. In this case, we have to start with our balance sheet. We need a balance sheet and, and we'll tell you why. And we'll tell you the rules for the balance sheet, which are a little, they're again, just tax rules. And then how do we compute and how do we present the IRR for different people? Now, here's what I just put today. Here is a teenager, okay? Well, there are problems. There are teenagers. Probably a lot of you were very good teenagers, but I've had children, and sometimes it wasn't so nice. Okay, and imagine now, imagine we're in a world where this teenager represents a tax deduction. And imagine there are some people who've just got paid a big, gigantic payment for some bonus or something and they're stuck in a high tax bracket ah oh, what can we do about this tax bracket well i've got my neighbor they've got a teenager like this why can't i just take that 
the teenager use that as a deduction or better yet a solar panel on the roof of somebody else why can't i just take the that and lower my tax bracket can you imagine if you were at the irs and everybody was able to lower their tax bracket and and and, and the, the the whole tax authority lose loses its revenues oh we're, we just can't allow any transfers at all we can't allow that but then you're the tax authority and people in in corporations have partnerships they have minority interests they have preferred stock are you telling corporations they're not allowed to have different distributions to one another so they can't form a partnership where uh, 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 the, and the partnership gets a consolidated kind of tax. We can't allow that. So what can you do as the tax authority? Oh my gosh. So you're, that's why I said you're pretending you're the tax authority and that's where we all start. Here's what they decide. Well, first of all, you can't do this if you've got a personal, you can't, you, the, the rules for personal and corporate taxes are completely different. This is all corporate taxes. Okay, uh, uh, I'm a poor person. I can't sell my, my, my deduction to somebody else if I put a solar uh, 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 panel on my house and I own that solar panel. I can't do that. But what they've decided is for corporations, you can kind of get this teenager, but then you have to take risks of the teenager. You have to be like this poor mother and you have to take the risks and you have to show people that you've taken the risks. And then you have to imagine these poor tax people, how in the heck are they going to, how in the heck are they, are they going to uh, get information and prove that you've taken the risk associated with this teenager? Okay, enough. So here's, now let's kind of get into modeling. That's just a little bit of overview. The first thing we're always going to do, and, and now I'm going to get into some modeling philosophy as well, and make absolutely sure that nobody's bureaucratic enough to say, oh, I've got to get everything in input C and input S, which is nice. Input C and input S are very nice things. No doubt about that. But I've got to put all this in. No, we don't have to do this. Number one, we need to get, and we need to think about this, and we, we model a pre-tax project IRR like you always should be doing, and some of you don't. Some of you put it, stick it all the way at the end. That's just the CapEx versus the, the, the EBITDA, of course. No, no gearing, no taxes, no nothing. And then we have to understand some general rules. What kind, the, as the tax and the IRA, I haven't even mentioned the IRA, the Irish, no, the, the, the Inflation Reduction Act has enormous incentives. The tax impacts are going to be really big. So can you start with something like a 3% IRR and make it into a profitable project and give the tax benefits to one party and the cash flow benefits to the other party. And if you have something like a even more than a 30%, it theoretically can get to 60% investment tax credit, that's totally possible. So we compute the project IRR first. And then now I allow you to, to, to download a couple of examples. And we start with a really, really simple example. Here, we got a 4% project IRO, just Eddie Dawn, some CapEx, nothing else. Or we make a nice input C, uh, 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 input C thing, and we don't put, we don't mix any tax assumptions or partnership assumptions or anything else into this. We keep it nice and clean. That's so important to start having an open mind, to start opening the way you're going to look at these things. We put that into a separate kind of thing, and then we compute our IRR with all of our stuff. Please, no P90 and P50. Please, nothing like that. Just keep it in P50. Keep it in one case. If you want to put a downside case later, of course, you can do that. But don't start polluting this with too much stuff. This is okay. We we by the time we put the yield and everything else, we got a, a a hundred or so lines. That's so we have an example of a kind of a simple model that you can download. 
or more of a complicated model and setting up this structure, keeping it nice and clean is so important to me. Now, again, I'm repeating myself, but don't be impressed with these people who can recite the tax rules. How do you find out about the tax rules where I'm certainly not good at going to the IRS and reading these things, you go occasionally to the internet. What I have tried to do here is give you in uh, in, in, in this one, for example, I have tried to, uh oh, and now I'm going to have to go back. I have tried to allow you to download some notes. I just try to collect articles. And, and the other thing that I find really important in understanding these tax rules is to work through some other models, see how they've modeled it, see if you can develop some consistency in all of this. This is the safe harbor. And so I've tried to give you some of the tax rules, but more important, when you, you think about the tax rules, think about the poor IRS person who had to come up with a way to make sure he's not giving away and he's not losing all his, his, his tax revenues. Okay, now just, uh-oh, I hope, I, okay, here, here I'm back. Okay, so we go through uh, 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 some of the tax elements and, and some of these are now, it sounds crazy. I hope some of you are, are, are new to this. And if you have something called a development fee, which you know probably about in project finance, a development fee might be 5% or something like this. Well, we see development fees of 25, 30%. That's where we write up the value of the asset. Oh my gosh. And when you take the investment tax credit, which is just, it's, it's a credit. It's not a tax deduction. It's not a deduction. It's direct removal, direct subtraction from the taxes you pay. You have to be a taxpayer to get that. You can, you can write up the asset and it's got to be written up to fair market value. And you've got to have some a, a accounting firm or some valuation firm come up come up and say that's an okay valuation of the asset and you can get a higher ITC so we have these rules then when we get to production tax credit we got to understand one thing that's absolutely essential and take a gigantic step back you have a choice now between taking that upfront tax credit, which is just dependent on how much you spent for the asset after the write-up or the production tax credit's completely different. It depends on how much you produce. And you can't tell me how much you're gonna produce, especially on a wind farm, you've got to figure out, oh my gosh, somebody did, did the, the, the forecast, the P50 and the P90, and they always get those forecasts wrong. And so our tax, in the case of a production tax credit, our, 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 our tax benefit depends on something that's uncertain. And then there are these rules, well, if you have ITC, you have to reduce your depreciation. And then we get to the balance sheet. And the reason the balance sheet is so very important, this man at the IRS, a woman, says, okay, I've got an idea. Let's make them make a balance sheet. And when they make a balance sheet, if we're going to make them compute the equity capital for the two different partners, we're going to, we're going to have a, a, a balance sheet computed for this, this thing we'll get into in just a second, this overall partnership we have. And that's easy. It's a three statement model, but we have to figure out what to do with the ITC. This at the, at the time you make your, 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 your balance sheet for this partnership, there's no ITC yet, it's pre-tax. Now, when I was young, like some of you, there was an investment tax credit and we used to put the investment tax credit as an as a item in between the liabilities and equity on the, on the liability and equity side of the balance sheet and we used to amortize that. No, you don't do anything like that. IRS says no. IRS says here's the rule for making a balance sheet. You stick you you stick the actual equity capital that you paid after and you just basically ignore the ITC. 
it took me so long to understand what are they doing here? How did they make this balance sheet? Because once you've got the equity capital on the balance sheet, you divide that equity capital between the two partners. And when that equity capital goes to zero, somebody at the IRS says, aha, I've got proof that you've not got a real investment in the asset. You've not taken risk. It's a bare transfer of a, a, a tax benefits and all that other stuff they say. So that's the if that's why I say try to understand the rules a little bit better, and we'll show you a, a little bit about that, okay? And I, I'm going to skip a couple of these other issues because I'm we're we're gonna we're, we're gonna look at them. I'm just trying to give you a way to think about this instead of just starting running in running to your computer and say, ah, look at this big model i'm gonna i'm gonna reverse engineering i'm gonna take this gigantic equation which is the most idiotic thing and try to redo it myself what you have to do basically is take a whatever you want to call this a corkscrew and put some subtotals in that corkscrew and and once you do that the equations start to be really really easy so here, here's some examples. And again, I've given you these spreadsheets and we certainly don't have time to, oh, this is very rare for me to have a discussion without even opening a spreadsheet, but I can show you that you can work through the kind of tax elements. And uh, I think it's the, the, the best way to try to look at this is with a simple case without getting too crazy at the beginning and you want you you when you when, when you set up the taxes my suggestion i hope i have it somewhere here oh no i'm gonna i'm gonna have to come down this is my old philosophy on doing it you can see i'm trying to be radical and different when i used to present this for for, for small kind of projects I used to say, okay, here is the partnership. No taxes here. This is the pre-tax IRR we're looking at. And then we're taking this partnership and an investment in this partnership is made by this partner and by this green partner down here. And I tried to draw these things in Excel and put little boxes here and put a reset button so we can, in case you moan about these, these boxes and think these are inappropriate and all that stuff. Uh, and then we could put the debt right against the SPV itself. And that means, and maybe this is not a great way to present that means, that means the debt gets paid before the tax equity. Or you could pay the developer, and once you pay the developer, then uh, uh, you, you, you put the debt at the end of the developer. And then we have our normal PPA, EPC, and O&M contracts to get this pre-tax IOR. And to explain this, to come up and maybe, I, 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 I wish I would get some comments and say, ah, I didn't like this diagram, present it differently. But think about this. Think about a model. Think about presenting a model in a different way. Don't just do the old, oh, I have to do a DSCR calculation or something else. Think about presenting this in a way. And, and when I presented this, I remember the big comment I got was, hmm, why is this color pink? Or why is this color green? That's the kind of thing. But they loved it. They said, oh, the tax equity is getting too high a return. We've got to fix something so we get a more fair return and then you're subject to the problems. Or you can say, oh, let's switch this. So we put the debt back here and let's look at our equity return and put a little sources and uses statement up here and seeing what's going on. Hopefully you can, again, see uh, uh, see what's happening now uh, if you were presenting kind of a bigger model here's what i'm i suggest is don't stick please oh i'm gonna i'm going crazy sorry i got emotional about silly little things but don't put the the tax stuff together with the in, the rest of the input C. How horrible would that be? There are a whole bunch of different scenarios you're going to put in here. Like when you do your regular kind of input C case, you might 
you, you, you might have a whole bunch of different scenarios up here. What, are you going to put the same kind of scenarios with different depreciation methods or even different tax rates? I could assume, I could understand you could make an assumption about the tax rate changing, but there are tax rules you want in this page and you want operational aspects of the project in a completely different page. And I know a lot of you are going to just say, no, 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 we've got to do it our standard way because we're not allowed to do that. And then once you put the tax rules in here, excuse me for uh, flipping up and down a little bit. OK, and, and here I've got in now. Now, again, you can uh, 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 look at these kind of tax rules and they're different rules for the investment tax credit and this thing called a bonus depreciation, where instead of even having MACRS, which I still call ACRS, that was the 1982 tax law. I'm showing my age a lot. That was when they said accelerated uh, uh, recovery system. A, uh, 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 yeah, accelerated cost recovery system, ACRS. MACRS was this problem with the old Bush got in when he increased the taxes a little bit and he modified it, M-A-C-R-S. That's why they call it M-A-C-R-S. And you can put the different, uh, 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 you can put the, you, you have a bonus depreciation where you got you got a immediate one time upfront uh, depreciation and you can put these, I think you can use this VBA uh, 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 thing in, in, in Excel, not VBA, uh, uh, whatever it is, uh, variable decline, VDB, uh, VDB, VBA, I know that. VDB, that's where you can you can kind of match up the tax rules. And then uh, uh, after that, we, we put this in and then you put the partnership assumptions somewhere else in a different input sheet. And then that's where you want to model the different aspects. And you can keep this if you put the inputs in a nice clean way in a separate place you can keep this all nice and not have one of these horrible models that it's almost impossible to interpret and worse yet is not able to say let's try a different strategy let's look at the risks let's look at the returns to the developers and the and, and, and the tax equity and let's look at them with different uh, 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 with, with maybe the developer gets after tax instead of pre-tax, different kind of tax position. It's interesting for me to think about these things. So we, I've got some examples of, uh, 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 I've got some examples of the the, the uh, rules in these little uh, uh, where where you can download these these the, these little things. Okay, and so so here, uh, then now let's look at let's look at ITC versus PTC just for a minute. Huh. How do we compare ITC and PTC? Remember, PTC, I think I can say this has more risk than ITC. PTC is based on production. ITC is based on investment. ITC is given as soon as you spend the money on your your, your capex. PTC you don't know uh, 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 until the future. Yeah, whatever you know what I mean. Uh, 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 PTC has an inflation risk in it, or you, it's really maybe it's the inflation rate taken out. Really, if you're really serious about this, you keep a real the the, the real value of the PTC stays the same itc as an investment tax credit what kind of projects have itc and ptc so in this little file we made a little example and it if, if the ptc occurs over time you need to put an assumption about a discount rate in there and people overestimate the discount rate all the time which is another thing i go crazy about but certainly not one I want to talk about today. Today we can say, well, what happens if you put different gains on the sale to compute the fair market value? What happens if you uh, uh, have different inflation rates? How would you look at this now? Uh, uh, you might like data tables. In this case, I think data tables kind of mess things up because we want to make a presentation. So this is an example where we've got different 
as the uh, as the uh, uh, um, excuse me as the ITC depends on the investment, the PTC depends on the production. Somewhere I better I put the capacity factor down here, and I was really bad. I didn't put the this is the net benefit. And where did I put? Oh, good. I put different costs here. I was afraid I didn't put them. So if we have a really high cost project and a low, uh, in this case, a low capacity project, it's pretty obvious that the 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 uh, uh, ITC is better because it all is a function of, of 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 your capital investment. If we go to here, this is even for a solar project, which would be a almost unrealistic one, but possible. If we have a really high, high uh, capacity factor or yield, which means we get a whole lot of production tax credit and a low cost, here the red one is a low cost. Well, it's better to have a PTC. If we if we have wind projects, yeah, you know, we're gonna look at those a little bit differently, and then you can go through and see what I had to do. It depends on the write-up you you assume, and it depends on the inflation. Generally, this is PTC. I did it a little backwards. PTC is generally more beneficial. Now, if we go continue, oh, I didn't put the hydrogen one here. Oh, where's my hydrogen one? In hydrogen, you have this thing called 45Q, just to be fancy and throw some silly numbers at you, but 45Q means if you capture carbon and measuring how much cap carbon you capture can be tricky, although that's feasible, they, 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 uh, 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 then you can get a tax incentive that last the PTC, I should have told you last 10 years, the, this, this incentive you get for 45 Q. And if you haven't even, if this is all new to you, I can imagine maybe your head is already spinning. I'm trying to get it to spin less fast around. And I'm trying to say, okay, let's look at some simple examples, work through them, just see how it all works. Take a little time before you start just going into some monster model. Take a little time, try to understand how these things really work it i can tell you what's not going to happen there's no gift from the sky there's no app you're going to be able to press there's no chat gpt thing that's going to say take all of this stuff and get it in my brain and just stick it in my brain and it'll be there you need to kind of have a little bit of background uh, 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 work a little bit on what I would say, say is some of the simpler kind of examples. Now that with hydrogen, you have PTC and ITC, but they try to differentiate the hydrogen according to how much how clean it is, whether it's pure green, whether it all comes from solar or wind. But imagine then you say I'm producing a bunch of hydrogen in my in my electrolyzer. And I just attach it to the grid and then I just get coal and natural gas to stick into my hydrogen. We can't give the same level of production tax credit to them. Oh, and then we have ITC. How in the heck are you going to say, OK, I'm going to give a certain level of ITC to a hydrogen project. But <laughs> I'm going to give that to you today and then you better promise me that you're not going to use any natural gas on that hydrogen project for the life they do that they basically say it's got to be directly attached and all that but can you imagine the rules can you imagine the rules and then we get into something even more which is they try to measure uh uh uh, uh with uh, uh, some of the carbon catch capture how 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 much do you really produce? How much? How how many greenhouse gases gases you produce? And there's a entity I used to work with called Argonne National Laboratory, who's got this report which I find fascinating, which says if you take and a bunch of natural gas leaks out, and then you're using that, and then you're after the gas leaks out and causes causes this extremely harmful uh, 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 greenhouse gas, how do you then? Uh, 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 
and then you're capturing the, 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 excuse me, you're capturing the carbon after you've leaked all this horrible natural gas out, you've got to account for that natural gas that leaks out and it makes all this stuff a little more complicated and I haven't kind of gone into the uh, 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 details of that. Now, after I'm, I'm, now I'm redoing this. If you can see, we have different allocations and, and, and now I'm going into a, a, a little bit of, whew, I'm going into a little bit of, of the more of what, what we're, we're not talking just about the tax rules. We're talking about how we, how we split up if we have a partnership, how we split up the, uh, 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 the the dividends, really. That's what you ultimately care about. If it was a regular old partnership, it was regular old project finance, you wouldn't care about anything else, nothing else. You'd only care about who gets the dividends when. And imagine you could have all sorts of, and I, I love these kind of things, creative ways to say, we have got a developer who's got no money but they're a little bit crazy. They're, they're, they're crazy. They, they put this kind of effort into this. They got this thing developed. They figured out how to get whatever they need to do to get this, this thing done, but they have no money. And then we find somebody else to put our equity money in. We want to give some developers some return, but we want to give him return after basically the, 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 the people who put a lot of the money in, the real money and get paid back you can have a flip structure you can have it say okay up until we that senior the senior uh, uh person the people who put the real money up until they get uh, five or six percent irr or okay somebody there's a little inflation now okay six and a half percent irr that's what they need after they get that then we're going to start giving a whole lot more to the developer. So we figure out an IRR and make it flip. When you do that, the, 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 it, it, think about the risk allocation. Think about that first investor, how much less risk they take compared to the developer. Now, the same kind of idea is used for uh, 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 these are these are the things called yield-based flips, where you decide on an IRR and you see who gets it first and who gets it uh, uh, later. Or you could have a, a, a and I've already that maybe that's almost too simple to go through, but you can say, okay, let's just uh, uh, let's just flip it at a certain time. So let's give all the the the. And I, I need to go backwards. I'm sorry. I was all talking about cash flow and dividends. But when we have these projects, we the big deal is we allocate not tax depreciation. You don't allocate tax depreciation one way and you don't allocate uh, uh, ITC. You allocate income on one method and you allocate cash flow or dividends on another method that's the key you don't you don't say ah we're going to take this piece and that piece it's income and uh, uh it's income and cash flow and if we think about it really simply we step back what you'd love to do is give all of the income until we until we hit the end of the tax depreciation period, give all the income and allocate all the income to the tax investor if we've got a partnership. And in that way, they can get all the benefits of the negative income. The income will be negative if we have a really high, high, high depreciation. We, 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 we give you, we give them that. And that's the, the same basis uh, 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 for allocating the ITC. And then we give basically all the cash flow to the to the developer, and the developer can then go to the bank, and it's a simpler loan in a lot of ways, because the, the developer goes to the bank and says, "I'm going to make a loan based on pre-tax cash flows." If you're outside of the U.S., 
uh, 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 your loans are off, often when you compute cash flow available for debt service and do your sculpting and do your analysis, they're often based on subtracting the taxes. In these transactions, it's almost all the, the for the developer, everything's at least on the financing side is pre-tax. So you give the developer all the cash, you give all the income to the tax investor. That's what you want to do. That would be a bare transfer of assets. Now, oh, I'm, hey, I'm running out of time, but actually we, we're we going to go through this. I'm just going to emphasize a couple of little tricks. Okay, which sounds, think, sounds good, Ed. I think are so important. That won't work. What I just said won't work because you will run into this famous negative equity position. And if you really understand how you're doing the negative equity position, and if you put the, uh, uh, if you've got a big model, if you put the allocation on one page and then the equity position, which is out of the three statement modeling, it's the equity. You can't compute a three statement model for each partner. You can only do the equity account and see when the equity account gets to be negative. Just a couple of issues. If you're a banker, if you're a banker and you've got to worry about a P90 and a, 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 a reduced risk for a wind farm, can you imagine? Can you imagine now you've got another element? Because if you hit a P, a low production level, not only do you have those risks with a low production level, you have the risks that the, the tax, the, the, the flip and the developer gets the cash flow later. And all of those kind of risks and all of those kind of exciting things. And here's where we just tried some simple uh, uh, allocations. And I, you know, if you want to learn this, I hope you can give me comments and say I've made some errors and all that. But we've tried to put these in simple kind of ways so you can work through step by step. One other thing, when you model a, a, a yield based flip, it is like a it's like a, a debt. It's maybe a subordinated debt with a cash flow sweep, 100% cash flow sweep, and uh, uh, and all payment in kind, no interest paid. So if you, I call it accrued pay, uh, cost of capital. You can imagine this, and you work through until you repay it, and then you don't do some kind of silly absurdly silly goal seek on the IRR or something like that, because that middle year can be really confusing. So we, all of these are kind of listed. I'm, uh, you, you know, Tay, I'll stop right now. <laughs> Sorry. But, but of course, uh, uh, when, when we try to have one of our, uh, our, our classes with the Project Financed Institute now, we try to go through step by step, but this overview I think is 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 uh, important. I'll stop here. I've only got three minutes, Dave. Thank you, Ed. No, this was this was really great. I wonder if there's any questions from anybody. Um, if you guys want to ask Ed something, please feel free to um, add your questions in the chat. We have three minutes left, um, so maybe Ed can take a question or two. Um, but hopefully, you have found this useful and interesting. Um, thank you, Ed, for your time. Okay, thank you, You Taya. are receiving some clapping emojis that I can see. <laughs> All right. A few people have asked about the recording, so just confirming once again, um, the recording will be available inside the PFI community within the next 24 hours. Um, we will add Ed's website as well on there if you want to refer to any of the pages that we've gone through during this session. Uh, and I think that's it. I mean, Great. I don't see any questions in the chat. Um, so thank you guys for joining us. Thank you, Ed, once again for your insights. These are always very useful um and yeah i guess i will see everybody soon okay and keep in touch if anybody wants to <laughs> whatever i i'd love to get to know you better okay fantastic thanks Website guys okay. well, thanks everybody
Have a nice day or evening. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.